that stream bank there is uh, is eroding and has been eroding over the years and uh, putting the highway in danger as well as the bridge structure up here. So it was our Lackaparra County Highway engineer here some eight, nine years ago that initiated an effort along with the Lackaparra Yellow Bank Watershed District, the Lackaparra Soil and Water Conservation District, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources, and even the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. So it was a large cooperative effort to see what could be done to help stabilize the stream bank in this area and uh, take the erosiveness out of the area here as best as possible and protect this structure here. This is the outflow of the Lackaparra Reservoir, which is the Minnesota River. And at this stage, we're in a stream gauging house here located on the uh, left bank of the uh, Minnesota River, then are the tailwaters here. And these stream gauges are very important in noting the discharge of waters, the amount of water that's leaving the landscape flowing in our rivers. They archive the data, and they're very important for resource management. This particular stream gauge is a cooperative effort between the Corps of Engineers, the USGS, and oftentimes the Minnesota DNR or local watershed districts. We needed to get this uh, sewer system done, you know, for the amenities in the community because we had old septic tanks and so forth, and uh, all those things are, a lot of them are getting, well, a lot of them are real old and so forth, and uh, we want to kind of, well, clean up the environment besides uh, taking care of our own, uh, our own sewage problems. So when you get flooding, well, then, of course, with all that surface water, well, then the pollutants go in, so that's why we're happy to like, the, you know, like I say, to get rid of those septic tanks and so forth, so that that pollutant is not available for floodwaters to, uh, to enter into picture, so. We have to have special reports that are due every year that we, they will follow up on. Anytime you get grant money, you have to um, follow all their rules and regulations and they check on you to make sure that you are doing that. So we do that, yeah. We'll be doing um, reports for the next 40 years because of these grants <laughs> for both sewer and water, so. And, and do you think it's worth it? Well, yes. If you had seen our water before and our sewer problems, yeah. We needed this and it's, it's good. We need it and it helps the city. I bought this land in uh, the year 2000. And at that time, it was a uh, farmland that had been reclaimed. It's got a conservation easement on it through the RIM program. We have bald eagles in the spring and sometimes in, when the slough uh, dries if there's fish that are, have died over the winter we've had as high as many as 80 eagles on this slough for a day or two. They migrate through here and of course the ducks and geese come through. There's a lot of deer down here now. We've got a lot of coyotes and uh, there's a lot of raccoon and, and small animals down here as well. The last couple of years the DNR has put a, some walleye fry in here and they mark them and uh, we let them out at the end of the summer and they can find them out here in the river then. You know, it would be my thought if we could restore all these sloughs, it's about 270 miles here by river to St. Paul. When we came to St. Paul we'd have nice clean water like uh, we've got in the upper river. The Minnesota River has really got it all, and it's a nice thing because it, it's, it's mostly wild all the way across the state, so it's connected to other good habitat, and that's why you get a lot of wildlife. Well, I started farming it in 52, and we could lose a crop out of 10. In 52, Benson area, a lot of the farms were half sloughs. And then they, that's when they started building ditches and, then dr and draining all that, and then all that water comes down, and that, that's why it floods every year. See, this year was all farmland. It got so that 
you didn't pay to put in a crop anymore, so you might just as well do something else with it. Make it a, a wetlands. This way, when the floods, why the flood water settles in here and it saves it from going into the river uh, or down to the Mississippi. And about 10, 12 years ago, why it flood every year, so we put it in the rim. And now see what it looks like. It's a sanctuary for birds and raising fish, deer, turkeys or pheasants or ducks or if you can hunt it all you should be able to get something and it probably isn't a lot of money but yet it's worth a lot to me for the river for my grandchildren and my neighbors. The Minnesota comes south from Luck Parle here and then uh, gracefully curves into Montevideo. This is the farm that uh, my husband Richard Handine's great-grandparents uh, bought from the railroad. We've been in the work of resurrecting this farm and we had been spending time with uh, farmers who were affiliated with the Land Stewardship Project and the Sustainable Farming Association of Minnesota and uh, many of those mentors affected our decision-making to manage grasslands. In doing that, we have learned to take the lesson from the Great Prairies, which has been to perennialize and to diversify. Come, you cows. Come on. We think of our farm rather than a little watershed, we think of it more as a water catchment zone through the use of perennials in the landscape and through the little dam that holds uh, our pond water. Since we have perennialized the landscape, the springs run year-round. There's just less volume of water in the stream, even after a high rainfall event, because we're holding more of it. We don't apply phosphorus. We keep our animals um, some distance from the waterways so that much of the nutrient that comes from them is absorbed in the paddocks, and so that doesn't make its way to the river. So that's pretty darn clear water by the time it hits the culvert. It is swimmable and fishable. Most farmers love the land, and they may not uh, all understand ecosystem processes in the same way, but uh, I think it's really important to listen to one another with an open heart, to foster biological diversity, and uh, to cycle nutrients in a way that doesn't contaminate the river, and to uh, effectively conserve, conserve, conserve our precious water resources.